Hello, 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 and welcome back to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and this week I have the special privilege of having my mom sit in as my engineer listening ear. With her being here, that just helps segue right on into this week's gratitude moment. So in addition to being thankful for having her here, um, a lot of different things that I'm grateful for this week, but one being I got to go to the pool this past weekend, which was a little weird because it was literally only two of us in there and we had to do the whole social distancing thing, but it was nice to be able to just get in the pool, kind of soak, lounge a little bit and take in some sun. Um, and also, I am sitting here, like I said, my mom is sitting in as my engineer this week. And so, just like I said, a lot of things to be grateful for in the midst of all of this lovely COVID-19 mess, um, because some people don't know how to act and don't want to wear a mask and stay inside. All these other things I feel like will be shut down again real soon. But in the midst of that, I'm healthy. And most of the people, a lot of the people that I know are healthy, we're doing well. So like I said, a lot of things to be grateful for. And I'm choosing to focus on that instead of the negative things. Um, and speaking of negatives, there's, if you've been on social media the last few days, entanglement is the word of the, the month, the year, the season. It's funny, but at the same time, it's, it's getting old. It's, I'm tired of hearing about it, but Thinking about all of the different conversations and things that have been discussed related to entanglements and Will and Jada, and as much as I say that's their business, keep it private, I wish they would have just kept it private, but now that it's out there, of course, it's going to be talked about. But one, there were several things that came up in that conversation, but I don't really want to dwell on that, more so the end where they said, we ride together, we die together, bad marriage for life which to me is crazy because I am not trying to sign up for a bad marriage, bad relationship, anything. And if it is, I'm not agreeing to stay in it for life. But like I said, it got me thinking and we all have relationships, whether it be the relationships that we have with our families, friends, or even uh, loved ones, romantic relationships. And a lot of what was talked about uh kind of in the, the red table talk um, about just happiness and wanting to be happy. Or I think Jada says you realize that, you know, I can't rely on somebody else to be happy. I have to do it for myself. But just what do we consider to be, one, what is happiness? How do you define it for yourself? But also in thinking about legacy and how we're building legacy, a part of that is the relationships that we have. And so do you have healthy relationships? If you have some that are unhealthy, how do you recognize that it's unhealthy? And then once you do, what do you do about it? So I'm going to start by saying I do not have all of the answers. So don't be asking me how sway because I'm not sure I can speak for myself and my experience. Um, and just one of the things that I've been doing in the midst of everything with COVID-19 because been in the house, not a lot of places to go, a lot of time to think, a lot of reflection. Um, but those are just some of the questions that I've been asking myself of where am I? Am I the person that like, would I want to be in a relationship with myself from a speaking of from a standpoint of getting married? Um, am I a good friend or how can I improve uh, as a friend, as a sister, as a daughter, uh, and so one of the things, like I said, in terms of happiness, like happiness is essentially a feeling or it's a state of mind and we're responsible for our own happiness. And that is something that we need to make sure that we are constantly aware of and kind of checking in and measuring because oftentimes I think we without realizing it, project our unhappiness or our feelings onto the other person. So like I said, whether it be in family or a, a relationship, you're looking to them to make you feel better. You're looking to them to for a lot of different things. And then when it doesn't happen, 
it's easy to blame it on the other person when in reality, especially when you are in multiple relationships and it's kind of ending the same way, at some point you have to stop and ask yourself like, okay, what's the common denominator here? Maybe I need to take some time and do some self-reflection. And like I said, that's one of the things that I have been doing because I know, and I think I've mentioned this in some uh, some other episodes of when I think about Molly and Issa's friendship and Insecure, I definitely have had some Molly moments in the past and I thank God for growth because I'm not there anymore, don't want to go back. But in terms of like measuring the success of a relationship, it's like, what do you do? Um, I know a lot of times I've heard people say, what are your non-negotiables? What are your deal breakers? What are the red flags? Like we always, there's always a sign. There's always something that you see early on, but in, in talking specifically in the context of relationships, we just kind of ignore it. Uh, specifically women, we tend to just kind of brush it, brush it under the rug. Oh, it's not that bad. Or, oh, it'll get better. Oh, I can change him. Things like that, that have been proven time and time again to not be true. So red flags. Uh, for me, some of the red flags would be you don't know how to communicate. You want to text all day, every day, and don't know how to pick up the phone to have a conversation, or you wait for me to initiate things. You don't take any initiative. Those are some of my red flags and pet peeves. Uh, if you are, I would just, mm, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it delicately, but if you don't have anything going on in your life, we probably aren't getting past hello, how are you doing? You probably aren't getting my number anyway, but just no accountability no get up and go so to speak um like if you are there's a i think there's a difference in terms of being content and complacent if you are at a point where in your career or your life you are content you are happy um that's one thing but i think there's always room for improvement there's always areas to you know ways to strive for more how do we improve how do we go to the next level. And so if you're not someone who is or has that mindset and you're just kind of, hey, I'm good. I got this job. I got these benefits. I'm good. I don't need anything else. Not trying to do any type of self-improvement extracurriculars. Like you're just, I go to work, I come home. Not going to work for me. But that's not necessarily a red flag, but it's just an example of some things that wouldn't work for me. And so I encourage you all to think about, if you haven't, just what are some of the your red flags um, and make sure that when you see them, when you sense them, you don't ignore it. I did a, I want to say it was a, like a devotional Bible reading plan, I want to say last year, and it was about red flags. And one of the things that I enjoyed about it or appreciated in the approach was it just kind of going through in that every red flag does not have to turn into a deal breaker because there are some things that it comes up and if you address it in the moment you have I would say an adult or mature conversation um, you can address it and maybe correct it and then move forward and it's not an issue but I think the mistake a lot of us make myself included is that will sense the red flag, will see it, but don't say anything and just hope that it'll go away. Or some people, when you see a red flag, as soon as you see like, oh, been there, done that, don't wanna go back, I'm not dealing with this. And then you just kind of cut everything off and assume the worst of the person without giving them the opportunity to correct the behavior or address it. Uh, an example being, for me, I don't like being cut off. I don't know why it bothers me so much. Part of it is about being a respect thing, but there was someone I was I was dating that it just kept happening like without fail. I'd be talking and then they'd interrupt. I was talking, they'd interject. And it was like, I was getting frustrated. And so finally I'm just like, look, why do you do this? Why are you like, do you realize you're cutting me off? And they, in that case, they weren't aware. It was just, they were excited. They wanted to say something and they weren't doing it uh, maliciously. It was just, they got excited and they wanted to do it. But after I addressed it and we talked about it, it was something, not to say it never happened again, but it was something that they did make a concerted effort to address um, and to make sure they were taking time to let me finish a thought 
and then we could go back and forth in our exchange. And I'm thinking also in a situation where I was doing something that someone didn't like, I'm very sarcastic. I think it's part of my charm, but I know that sometimes it could rub people the wrong way. And so I've had friends as well as people that I've dated that bring it to my attention of just how I say things um, in terms of when. And so that's something that, okay, it was brought to my attention. All right, it's definitely was not my, um, don't wanna keep doing that. So let me be mindful of how I'm saying things and when. So like I said, those are just some examples from my personal experience. But one thing I actually saw a post, or I've seen it a couple times now about green flags. Like so often we hear about the red flags and what are your deal breakers. But when I saw the post about like, what are some of the green flags, meaning what are some things that the person does that you really enjoy or appreciate that gives you the indication of, hey, okay, this could work, or I want to continue getting to know this person and seeing where things could go. And I'll be honest, when I read it, I'm like, mm, what is a green flag? But I hadn't really given it a lot of thought. But like I said, in terms of communication, that's a big thing for me, um, where I can tell that if a person, growing up, I was always taught my word is my bond. And so if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do everything in my power to do it. And if something happens that I can't, I'm going to let you know. So for me, if I see that a person that I am dating um, a, in terms of developing a new friendship, if they tell me they're going to do something and they follow through like that, on one hand, it's like, oh, that's real small. But on the other, for me, that like that's really big. And it's like, oh, OK. We could do something, maybe you all right, I can keep you around. Like I said, that's a small one, but I would encourage you all to think about not just the red flags, but the green flags. Like, And as, we, or as you are progressing, getting to know people, dating right now is even stranger than it was before because I know personally, I'm a bit over the whole dating process now. I know a lot of people who are, but now more than before a lot of it is virtual or it's because we're not doing much uh face to face things are opening up and closing every day so i think now it's requiring people to tap into a creative side that either they didn't know they had or never had to use before and so i think it will be interesting to see just how things develop from that standpoint um even kind of taking it away from, from dating, uh, thinking about kids and, and people in general, making French, developing friendship, meeting new people, because even school is not the same way that it used to be. So it's a lot more about being on a computer, doing FaceTimes, doing Zoom, Google Meets, all the different virtual ways that people are communicating. Um, but just as we are going about doing those things, I would encourage you all to focus, put more focus on the positive things and then not to say to ignore the red flags or even uh, talking to my mom about it earlier, the, the yellow flags the things of it's like, hey, it's not a deal breaker, but it's not ideal. Like it could be one of those things of it's not necessarily bad, but it's not my cup of tea. Um, I'm trying to think of one for myself would be, hmm, okay, this not necessarily, it's not, I could kind of a, a yellow, yellow thing for myself of video games. I was never really big into video games, but I know that people play them and so it's not a bad thing, but if someone is like really into it and that's majority of what they do with their free time or that's, that's their, that's their thing, it's something that I know for me, we'd have to have a conversation about it because it's like, hey, I'm going to try. I will try. I will sit there with you, but know that this is not necessarily going to be something that I do a lot of and wondering like how you where does it fall in your priorities? Because if you're someone who does you get off, you do the video game, that's that, that's your thing 24 seven. I know that's not going to work for me. Um, so I say all of that to say that as you are meeting people and developing, not even just meeting people, but even kind of 
taking some time to check in on your current relationships. Um, just kind of what are some things that are going well? What are some areas like, hey, maybe I could do a better job of checking in on my family, checking with my friends, especially now because we're not able to go out and meet up with people as regularly as we once were. Um, so I know for me, it's a matter of as much as I say I want people to pick up the phone and call me, you don't always feel like talking. So, but one of the things that I have made a concerted effort to do in recent months is to call my family or even like family members that before I wouldn't necessarily talk to that regularly, just taking the time to call them or send a text, hey, how are you doing? Just checking on you um, and seeing how people are doing. Even friends that I have from years ago that we don't talk regularly, being uh, more intentional about reaching out to people. And then the ones that are closer to me, like doing things outside of outdoor activities, um, coming up with different ways to interact with people. And then on the flip side of that is as you are checking, kind of checking in. And one of the things that I've been doing is what are some things that are no longer serving me? And I've heard that term so many times. And I used to think, oh, people are just saying something because it sounds good. Like, what does that really mean? But I can say that I honestly have a greater understanding and appreciation for that in the sense that if it's not bringing me joy, if it's not adding to my life, if it's not something or someone who's holding me accountable and uh, pushing me, encouraging me, what purpose? Like, why are you here? If you're constantly causing me stress or not really adding anything, then it's like, mm, do I really need it? Do I really need you in my life? And not necessarily to say to the extent that I'm cutting people out, but realigning my priorities or realigning their, their place in my life. Um, and so I encourage you to do this, like I said, with family, with friends, with someone you're dating, uh, just to kind of check in to see, okay, where are we? How are things going? Is this good? If it's not, is it something that is, is there enough here to worth trying to, to fix or address or save? If not, then is it time to move on? And that, I would say in terms of time to move on, it, I would say that just kind of makes me think about settling because once again, in the midst of everything with COVID, it's time for a lot of conversations, a lot of reflections. And one thing that I've heard or that has come up often is, did I settle? Am I satisfied? And so it's like, what's the difference or is there a difference between settling and making a concession that this no one is perfect um this person or this relationship has majority of the things that i want and need and so i'm going to stick with it i'm going to stick it out but like i said it's a matter of where is that line of delineation between i'm making concessions or being content or I'm settling. And I believe that far too often, specifically with women, um, it's more along the lines of settling because it's, well, they've got, they got five out of 10 things on my list. Uh, and it's better to have someone than nothing or something than nothing. And even hearing different people talk about the fact that they they're married, but there's someone else that they think about, or there was, you know, that, that one that got away or that they acknowledge that, Hey, I didn't really love this person when I got married, but I was ready to get married or I didn't want to be by myself or whatever the reason was, but not truly being happy or satisfied in the relationship, but just kind of accepting things for what they are. And that's even, that's something that I would say I picked up on in listening to the conversation uh, between Will and Jada about their marriage and the whole, 
bad marriage for life. It's just like neither one of you, and it could have just been them acting. It could have been a front because they put it out there. But the thing that I'm from watching them, it's like, why are you still doing this? Like, I get that you love each other, but what about this? Like, what are you getting from this? And obviously they know the answer to that. But I would say that's something that we have to ask ourselves because I know, and once again, looking at my life and even my the people in my circle, it's where I am single, I'm getting older, but it's like, okay, as much as I want to be married and have a family, I am not interested in just getting with someone or being with someone for the sake of for the sake of saying that I now am married and I have a family because at this point I'm pretty comfortable living my life by myself or as I am and so if you're going to come in I need to know that you're what's your value add like I know what mine is and I know what I'm willing to do and I'm capable of in a relationship so it's like if you're not adding to that if you're not saying okay this is what I bring to the table and this is how we can build together mm, I don't have time for it I don't I don't have I don't have the energy the desire to to put in the work that is necessary for a relationship um and the same with friendships like I love my circle and I appreciate each and every one of them and the roles they play in my life and I pray that they feel the same about me and that we continue to push and encourage one another um, personally, professionally, and in every aspect of life. But I would just say, I'm at this point, I'm not settling anymore. But I recognize that in, not, in saying settling, there's a difference between not settling and not having unrealistic expectations. Like I've often heard people talk about a list. And I know Michael, uh, Pastor Mike Todd has been doing, had previously did, and I think they're doing like a, a remix of it, of the Relationship Goals series. And one of the things, or one of the set, uh, sermons was talking about a list of just ripping up the list, letting go of the list. Um, and that could be in the sense of a relationship. It could be in the sense of what you thought your career would be, what you thought you needed to do in terms of home ownership, uh, weight loss, uh, whatever it may be, whatever list that you had that is like, hey, I've got to get X, you know, one, two, three done and checked off before I am successful, before I've gotten to that point. And I know one of my pastors used to say, or has said, don't should yourself. And it's like we get so caught up in these lists and ideas of what we think happiness is or looks like what we think a successful relationship looks like a successful career looks like but it's just like okay let me take a step back and let me re-examine reevaluate this list or this criteria that I have come up with and it's like are these things that I actually decided that I wanted and needed or are these things that society or family or whomever else have kind of put on me to say this is the the barometer, this is the standard and you need to rise to it? Or is it something that I set for myself? And I know in my, my personal journey, I realized a lot of the things that I was holding myself to were not things that I decided. They were things that I was told or I picked up directly or indirectly over the years. And in unlearning those things, I would say there's a a great sense of relief and freedom in that and it's like taking all of these different le lessons that I've learned in different aspects of my life and it's like okay finally stuff is starting to gel and that's the approach that I'm taking in like I said in all relationships so it's like hey we see that uh, I think about Facebook it says what's your status people are always like what's your relationship status and I, I did see some shirts now it's single tangled, single taken entanglement. Um, but I'm not trying to be in any more entanglements in my life. And I hope that you're not. And if you are getting into one that you know what you're getting yourself into. But like I said, kind of pulling it away from that. But if you think about relationship status, like 
What's the status of your relationships? What's the status of your relationships with family, with your friends and your romantic relationships? So take some time to do some reflection and think about kind of where you are, who you are, what your um what is your value add? Like what are you bringing to the table and then look at the people who are in your life and around you and what they're bringing, what they're doing for you and if it's if you don't like the answers you come up with, okay, take some time to think about okay, what are we going to do? Where do we go from here? How do we adjust it? Now, while you're thinking about how you can adjust it as you're checking in with yourselves, I want you to, like I said, think about it, but don't forget to come back next week because I am going to have some guests join me to continue this conversation, but just give, I would say, some different perspectives and larger life experience um, in terms of how to how they have handled this, how they're approaching these things, and hopefully also give us some tips and suggestions on how to do it and continue doing so, so that we become better individually and then to subsequently or eventually be greater in our relationships. So with that being said, I want to transition into my random shower thought of the week, something a little more lighthearted, but still kind of influenced by COVID. So everything has been shut down. We have been social distancing, quarantining, um, but uh, it seems to be the understanding that if we're doing something outdoors, it's safer. There's less likelihood for something to be, for the virus to be spread. And so I remember in looking at Dave Chappelle's comedy show he did recently, it was outdoors and a lot more things are being scheduled for outdoors. So I'm wondering if outdoors is supposed to be safer and there's all this talk about it's, um, you know, we're getting close to students going back to school and where are we opening? Is it going to be virtual, remote? Like what's it going to be? I've seen some Places are talking about doing partially in person and then partial virtual, which I think that's a nightmare and a headache that they're just asking for. But my thought is, what if or can outdoor school become a thing? And if so, how would that work? But I'm just wondering, like, okay, since we're saying everything outdoors, what if we would someone be willing to create a classroom outdoors? And then it's like, if you do, how does that really work in terms of making sure that there's separation and that, okay, if we're all outside in a classroom and you got desks and what, like, how would it, what will it look like? And then is that even effective? And what else can you then take to transfer to be outdoors? Cause you know, he set up an outdoor comedy show Okay, cool. There have been outdoor festivals, but then even with that, how do you contain the numbers and make sure it's still safe and effective? And because I'm thinking with kids, if they're outside, most likely they're going to want to go run around and play and then try to and just see what's going on outside as opposed to focusing on one teacher. So it's like when we put little like fake barrier walls up to make separate classrooms um, would a spa be done outside? But like I said, just different thoughts that I've had. I don't know if it's going to happen or even if it did happen, like what it would look like, how it could work, if it would even be effective. But like I said, that's my random thought for the week. Uh, so you hear mine. Uh, let me know yours, if any. Doesn't have to be from the shower, but if you have random thoughts, love to hear them. Maybe we can discuss but thank you all for listening. Remember, life is a journey, not a destination. And it's all a part of this lovely process. And as we continue this process, make sure you are following us on Instagram at podcast. It's all good. Uh, we're on YouTube. The channel is it's all good. 
If you are not already, please subscribe uh, to the podcast, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, or Google, uh, and rate. Like I said last week, there is now merchandise available. The link is available in uh, the bio and all that good stuff. Appreciate you. Have a great week.